Hello everyone. Welcome to this series about creating service abstractions in software. Today's video will be about queries. First, a little background story. We are a team that creates software for the power users company. This company sells electricity. Once a month, we have to send an invoice to all of our customers. In order to do that, we should first read out how much electricity the customer has used. We can get this information from the smart meters that they have installed in their homes. When we read a smart meter, we get the amount of electricity the customer used during the day, to which the high tariff applies, and the amount used during the night, to which the low tariff applies. Let's take a look at some code for that. We have the invoicing service in our application layer. It gets the invoice repository injected, and when it is asked to create an invoice, it will receive a command object, which has the customer ID, for which we are going to create the invoice. Then here we first get the first, the next uh, identity for the next invoice that we're going to create. And somehow we have to determine what will be that, that low reading and high reading from the customer's uh, meter. Using this information, we can finally create the invoice entity and save it in the repository, after which we return the new invoice ID. But where do we get the meter reading from? That will be the difficult part, right? Well, lucky for us, there is the Energira API that we can use to get meter readings for a particular customer ID. Again, very lucky for us, they use the same customer IDs as we do. In order to make a, an HTTP call, we could use any library that, that we want, but for now, let's use uh, Guzzle. And after taking a look at Guzzle's documentation, we figure out that we first need to set up uh, an instance of its client object, which we can inject as a dependency here, after which we can make a, resp uh, a request to their API using the customer ID from the command object. And its response will be that JSON structure, which we can decode. And of course, we can get the low and high keys from it. Uh, and those will be the actual readings, after which we can just continue creating that invoice. And now we're getting to our first point where we might need abstraction. We shouldn't forget that Guzzle is just one of many available HTTP clients, and it has its own specific API, which may change at some point in the future, in particular in backwards incompatible ways, which is a pain for us as maintainers of the project. So we might be better off using an HTTP client abstraction, like HTTPlug. This library abstracts away the differences between several concrete HTTP clients that are currently available. Again, after reading some of its documentation, we may have figured out how to use it. Uh, they use the HTTP client interface, which is defined uh, by PSR 18, by the way. And we, get, we can inject it here. And later, we make a request in more or less the same way. So not much has changed here. It's again a GET request to the API meter. And we still decode the response in the same way as we did before. This is nicer. Using an abstraction for a tool like an HTTP client is a smart thing to do in general because it's hopefully more stable than any concrete HTTP client we might install in our project. Unfortunately, an HTTP client abstraction is not the abstraction we should be looking for when we make queries from within the core of our application. Instead, we should ask ourselves what if the source of the data changes? What if one day we start maintaining our own local database of meter readings? Or what if the protocol or any other part of the underlying technology changes? What if Energira switches to SOAP instead? Who knows? Whenever I'm looking for an abstraction for a query in my domain code, I use the following recipe. First, I define the question, which becomes an interface with a single query method. Then I define the answer as a single class, which will follow the design rules of a value object. The question that our application code should ask in this case is not what is the response to an HTTP GET request for API meter 
something something, but what are the meter readings for customer X? This results in our question interface called meter readings with that single query method get for customer, which returns a reading object. The reading object will have a low and a high method to return the separate readings. And as long as we use the Energera API specifically, we will have a single implementation of the meter readings interface, which uses the HTTP client, just like we did before. We can easily copy any of the HTTP request code from the previous uh, invoicing service. Everything stays the same, except at the end, we return a reading object which contains the low and high values. And inside the invoicing service, we get a meter reading service injected instead of the HTTP client that we got before. And we can directly call it with our customer ID to get a reading object, which we can ask for the low and high readings. Now that we've introduced an abstraction for meter readings, we might want to look for some feedback about the new design, and we can get that feedback from the tests. In the case of an application service like our invoicing service, I'd want to write a use case test in BHAT style. That is, write some scenarios in plain English and write some code for it that executes these scenarios and shows that we have implemented them correctly. As an example of a scenario in which we test the automated creation of an invoice, we could write something like this. Given customer C has a meter reading of 0, low, and 100, high, and the high tariff for customer C is 0 0.05, when the system creates an invoice for customer C, then the total amount on that invoice should be 5. For each of the given when and then steps in the scenario, we'd have to write a step definition in a so-called context class. BHAT will read the scenario and run the corresponding methods, replacing placeholders like customer ID with the actual values provided in the scenario. If a method throws an exception, BHAT considers the step to have failed. Otherwise, it will continue to run the next step in the scenario. A general rule for use case tests, just like with unit tests, is that we don't want to accidentally invoke external systems like a database, a remote service, the file system, the clock, or the system's random device. Doing so would make our tests unstable because external systems may be slow, unpredictable, or simply broken at any time. In our case, we wouldn't want the actual Energera API to be used in our test scenario. If we'd still get the meter readings directly from the Energera API using the HTTP client service, we'd have to create some kind of fake response in our tests. Our step definition would then look something like this. First we have a step definition for given customer C has a meter reading of low and high. Here you can see the placeholders for the actual values, in our example uh, 0 and 100. And BHAT will run this method, and in this method we prepare the JSON data that we expect the Energera API to return to us. And we use a, a property on the context class to store the response that we want to later use. The when step, when the system creates an invoice for customer, customer ID, also has a placeholder for the actual customer ID, and it is going to invoke our application service. But we, of course, have to set up the dependencies first. I've created an in-memory invoice repository, and I've set up the HTTP client to be the context itself. Um, when we call create invoice, of course, this service will use the HTTP client to make the actual uh, request. And as you can see, I let the invoicing context here also implement the HTTP client interface so that we can use that property here to return the response we have created in the given step. And we also save the actual request as a property so that we can later make an assertion about it here.
assert equals, this is the request we expect the service to make. The result is that the high-level scenario test is tied to very specific details about the Energera API, like what does its response structure look like, what's the API endpoint we should call, and so on. But what if the Energera API changes? We won't know by running these tests because the data in the test is completely fake. What if we want to migrate to a different service? Nothing would change about our domain logic, but still we'd have to change our use case tests and the invoicing service itself. If, on the other hand, your dependency is the meter reader abstraction, you can create a very simple stub or fake object which represents the meter reading in your own domain's language. Looking at the code of the step definitions, we see a different implementation for this step given customer C has a meter reading. Where low and high are provided as values from the scenario, we can immediately instantiate our custom reading object, which is actually part of our domain. And in the when step, when the system creates an invoice for a customer, uh, we create the invoice in the same way as we did before. But now, instead of the HTTP client, we inject a meter readings instance, which again is implemented by the context itself. Uh, looking at what's going on there, a meter readings has a method get for customer, and it will return the reading object we have set in this given step. It will also remember the actual customer ID as provided uh, as a method argument here, so that we can later make a little assertion about it to check that this service actually uses the customer ID provided in the uh, command object. The design feedback we get from using our own abstraction instead of the HTTP client directly is the following. The high-level use case test doesn't have to deal with any of the low-level details anymore. This helps us focus on the bigger picture, which is exactly the goal of a use case test. Test doubles are easier to set up which makes the tests easier to write as well. We can write more scenarios with different examples, illustrating different situations, and we don't have to worry about writing all that request response setup code. I find the easier it is to write a test, the more tests will be written. And of course, that's a very good thing. Finally, both the application service and the use case test all speak the language of your domain, as opposed to something called text speak. In theory, someone who doesn't know much about programming or HTTP APIs could still follow what's going on in both your application service and your use case test. In short, the advantages of using an abstraction for a query are it's your own abstraction, it's defined in your own domain or application layer code, the implementation of the query interface is in the infrastructure layer, and this means that the infrastructure code can be changed at any time, in any way whatsoever, meaning that external changes generally won't have an influence on your domain logic. For example, when we'd have to switch to some other service like Electricery, which still uses FTP to upload meter readings to our server, nothing would have to change about the invoicing service itself. We'd only have to provide an alternative implementation for our own meter readings interface. Here's an important question. Do you really need an, an abstraction? I find that it's not always easy to decide if you need an abstraction. Introducing too many interfaces for services leads to code that is quite pain painful to read. A good rule of thumb is, as soon as you need to reach outside of your application, you need an abstraction. Because that's the point where you are going to do something technical, something infrastructural, and you want to replace that part of the code with a fake implementation when you start running your tests. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Find me on Twitter or leave a comment below this video. Also, feel free to subscribe to this channel as well if you want to receive notifications about uh, future videos. Bye bye.